last lecture we were uh, stopped at the diffraction due to edges in the subsurface and we stopped at discussion regarding Huygens or Huygens principle. Huygens principle states that at the wave front of a propagating wave energy, each point can be considered as secondary source. So each point on the wave front is itself a source and and so on. Now we have three movies we are going to, to see uh, today. The first one gave an illustration about Huygens principle which said that every point of a wave front this this line is a wave front this line describes the plane the wave arrived at certain time so this blue line is the wave front so every point of a wave front may be considered the source of secondary wavelets that spread out in all direction, in a spherical direction. With a speed equal to the speed of propagation of the wave itself. This is the applet to describe the phenomena or to describe the work of Huygens principle. Now we have two interfaces, medium one and medium two. Now we are considering ray or energy uh, incident at angle of 45 degree, uh, degrees on this interface. Okay? So this illustrates the in incident itself. So for the sake of this applet, we are uh, choosing number of points in the, in the uh, interface. These points will be used to uh, to map or to image the effect of Huygens principle. So the, each of these points will, be, will represent secondary source or subsource of the wave front. So now as you see when the wave hits the interface now each point propagates circular waves in all directions as you see. So this one represents the wave front for the reflected energy and this plane represents the reflection the refraction energy into the second medium. Okay? Now the same condition but with pointing or delineating the, the wave front itself. Of course, as you know, for reflection, we have the angle of reflection is the same angle of refraction. Of course, this for horizontal interface. And this illustrates the case, and this is a Snello. So the angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection, and this angle obeys Snello, which states that the ratio of the velocity of the first medium to the second medium equal to the ratio between the uh, sine of the incident angle uh, uh, divided by the sine of the uh, refracted angle. Now considering we have many wavelets coming, not, not just uh, one, uh, one wave front coming, so we have also number of reflected 
energy and also number of refracted energy. Which is typically the case we are facing in seismic experiment. So when wave enters more optically dense, here, here we sp he speaks about optical representation. We have when the, the velocity for our case for seismic, when the velocity increase, we have the reverse. We have the, uh, the frequency uh, also increase and the wavelengths decrease. Now we have another movie also speaks about the wave phenomena as a whole, but we are going to, to take the part for the diffraction. First, this video start by defining the uh, basic definition of waves. The wave front. What is the wave front? So the blue line represents the direction of energy propagation or energy transfer. The distance between any two point, two successive uh, point, two peaks or two troughs or two uh, points with one cycle is called the wavelength lambda. Now, considering that we have 3D or we have many waves moving uh, together, we can put these lines, as you see, this line here represents the wave front. Of course, you can, you can put the lines here at the troughs. It's not, it's not only on the peaks. Uh, also, the wave front is perpendicular uh, to the uh, wave direction of propagation. Here we have two types of waves. We have plane waves. As you see, plane waves, we have the wave front represent straight lines. And this can be represented by the lights coming from the sun. When we have very long distance, the lights coming from, from the sun can be represented as parallel or plane waves. And this is another circular wave. It's the, the energy move in all direction. And uh, if you go to the lake here and you, you, you throw a stone in the, in the lake, you will see a circular one. Now we are going to speak about Huygens principles again. Now we have plane waves incident at diffraction grating. As you see, we have the here diffraction. Then what happens? This, the edge of this diffraction make this diffraction form. The wave front, the, this point acts as secondary source and the energy moved in circular wave front as you see in this example. So this occur when the, the, the dimension or the length of the grating here is so much smaller than the wavelength. When the wavelength is bigger than the grating, so it cannot differentiate, something like Fresnel zone can differentiate between these two points, so it appears like, like one single source. But when we have the grating great or longer compared to wavelengths, then the action or the effect is evident here. This is a co-location of two sources here, one at this edge and one at this edge. Uh, now this uh, is the def definition of the interference and superposition. We are going to, to skip uh, this, as w I guess we, sp we, we have discussion about this before. Uh, but you can, uh, you can use this for using the e-learning, because this uh, lecture will be on e-learning today, inshallah. 
Okay. One of the one of the uh, consequences of Huygens' principle uh, is that uh, now we are here in this uh, class, this mammal or laboratory. Uh, I speak. <laughs> so the sound waves move in all direction, but at the the fraction grating at the grating there at the door, the, my, the, the energy diffracted, and then my voice or our voice, if we make loud the voice, will be uh, heard by people outside. This is due to this Huygens principle. If this is not happening, so uh, our, our voice in, 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 a, in a closed uh, place cannot be can go outside this uh, class. Also, another, uh, another point, there were uh, argument and the big debate about the nature of waves, the wave nature of lights. Some scientists argued that the, the light is of having wave phenomena, while others argued no. Why no? Because for, for, for their understanding of the phenomena, the light does not represent the Huygens principle. There is no uh, diffraction. But when uh, some scientists use very s small gratings, the diffraction of lights becomes also visible. So when this finding is, uh, just, is justified, it's OK, and uh, everybody now accepts that light has uh, wave phenomena, okay, wave phenomena. Now we have to, to finish our movies with an example, realistic example, for what happened And this uh, MIT uh, experiment. Now they have shallow water tank and light source. It's like overhead and then mirror and this one is a screen. I, I guess this was one of the overheads they, they didn't want and they modified. Uh, so this uh, one represents the, the source for uh, plane waves and here this is a grating. Now you see what, what happens. Now this is a plane waves and here is the grating or the slate. And here as you see this as a diffraction. Okay. When the slit is wider, you see the effect here. Now it's evident that the two edges contribute. Okay. As also as the frequency increase, the separation becomes more and more visible, as you see here. Because we have constant velocity, so the frequency increase means the wavelengths decrease. So when the wavelengths decrease, uh, the resolution becomes more, uh, more clear. The example continues uh, considering two slits or two gratings. So it's, it's simple apparatus we can, can make in, in our school. So you see, you see the, the situation here. This is a diffraction, this is a parabola we have in our world. We have this for, uh, you can say, refraction, and we have also parabola for the reflection backward in the uh, upper part of the movie. So now we are increasing and increasing frequency. So as I told you, we increase frequency, 
means we are decreasing wavelengths. So decrease, uh, uh, sorry, increase, yes, decreasing wavelengths, which mean we have shorter wavelengths, we have higher resolution. We can get information about very small features and the subsurface. And this is called, as I told you, Fresnel zone. Now we return back to the migration issue. Last time we were speaking about diffraction stacking. If you remember, we have the umbrella or hyperbolic uh, shape on our record. This hyperbolic shape, uh, similar to other hyperbola, like in the one you, you saw in uh, GBR uh, experiment. So this hyperbolic shape does not represent a reflector, but it's a point and energy uh, uh, propagated in all direction from this point. So my intention was to remove this energy and return it, this energy back to the source of diffraction, to the point itself. So how can I do, I, I, I make this? First, I define the time or the equation that represents the, time, the travel time from the source to, to the receiver. So this equation is t square equal 2r over c square, which equal t to the depth square plus 4xr to the surface, the, 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 the uh, distance from the diffraction point to the surface, minus xd with the horizontal distance, the, the horizontal location of the diffract, diffraction uh, center, uh, divided by c squared, which is the velocity. So this equation represents the travel time due to diffraction at an edge. Maybe this edge is the fault plane or any other uh, geologic feature. So here is the time changing with what this is not a changing, so changing with xr. xr is the distance between the source, not, not the shot, the, the diffraction source, and the geophone on the surface. Okay? So this equation can be regarded as the move out, like the move out, the normal move out equation. Here, here uh, R being the distance in a homogeneous medium, velocity C from the diffractor located at XD uh, and uh, ZD. This is the location of the reflector, ref, ref, diffractor in the space, which equal T over D divided by CS to the surface XR, surface position, the position of geophones. Okay, Ashraf? So, if you have an idea about the hyperbola equation, this one also represents the hyperbola equation. And this is a schematic representation of the problem. Here is the diffractor, whatever geologic, what is the geological type of this diffractor, and here is the diffracted waves in all direction. This is R. This is the location XD and uh, XD and Z, uh, D. Uh, uh, this is, uh, this is uh, the time due to the, the depths, which is here, for the ones that directly blow, directly uh, above the geophone directly above the, the diffractor. And this is it so important? Is it so important to, to, to speak? No. Important issue? So 
So if we map or graph this time, it will be like this one, which, as we said, is a hyperbola. To solve this problem, before the, uh, the diffraction, before the invention or uh, the intensive use of computers, uh, the equation we have just seen was used, like the normal move out, to uh, eliminate the move out, this, the diffraction move out along the traces, and then the traces summed up again to produce the uh, one point or one trace representing the point as a diffractor source. Okay? When the computer come to the picture, they used other relation. It's somehow uh, similar. It's the, 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 the energy at the point of, diffra of the diffraction is, is the summation for each point, the traces at each point on the surface, with this one representing the normal the, sorry, the diffraction move out correction. Okay, so this one used to build up or to return the energy back to the surface, to the, its proper location. Okay, in the preceding slides, we dealt with single point, single diffractor. This principle can be further used to image by consider all other diffractor points. When the separation between diffraction points becomes infinitesimally small, the reflector is then determined or represented. In fact, this is our, is our work. What we are doing is not, is not this point, but generally we are disc discretizing the wave field, we are discretizing the model of the subsurface. Uh, always we try to arrive at the true one, but we cannot arrive at true one unless we have the separation between our discretization points uh, equal to zero. So if our discretization point equal to zero, then we, we can say that my model is a true model. But this is not true. Always we have separation, so we are achieving the true model, but not uh, no approaching the, the true model, but not the true model. Now we have an example. This one we have uh, four diffractors, as you see. We have four hyperbola, and we apply this correction, the stacking, diffraction stack correction, to remove this hyperbola uh, shape, we end up with this four point representing the source of diffraction. So if we assume that we can represent the, the, refract, the reflector with multi-point multi like, like this one, we may uh, use such technique for uh, move, uh, explaining the condition uh, of diffraction, uh, the explaining or imaging the reflector itself. Now, moving to dipping reflector. This uh, graph represent or uh, is an illustration of the problem. Now, uh, sorry. Uh, this situation is the offset, the zero offset uh, recording. Zero offset recording means what? Mean I, mean I am shooting and recording at the same location. Okay? So, this is virtually the zero offset. I'm shooting at this point, and then it, it is a perpendicular, perpendicular incident, and then 
reflected back to the same point. So this, how zero offset should look like uh, in, in reality. S and G is the source and G phone, or short and G phone. So considering here we have two points, A and B, and these are two points in the subsurface along dipping interface. When I'm using offset, zero offset uh, representation or display, I am putting this, the point just under the geophone A and B, the geophone, the source and geophone A and the source and geophone B. So, if I'm using, using compass and then measure this distance or time and then plot this arc till just below the offset, the zero offset, then I determine the the apparent new point, which is C dash, doing the same for D, and here obtain D dash. So what I see in the uh, cross section, zero offset uh, seismic section, will be this one, not the true one. This one, but not the true one. Why? Because in the or zero offset, I put the point, just underneath the zero offset position, uh, which means the, the, the position of shoot and receiver coincide, coincidence. So as you see here, this is a true uh, reflector, and this is the apparent reflector. It's clearly seen that the dip of the true reflector is much higher than the dip of the apparent reflector I have on the seismic section. Okay? Analyzing this situation, We find out that this is a depth section. This is a true one. This is a true depth section with angle, dip angle, theta. So uh, dz uh, divided by dx, or the deriv derivative of dz of z, which is a depth, in term uh, according to our or relative to uh, the horizontal direction, which is tan, for, tan theta is the dip angle. However, what we have here, the, deriv the derivation of dt uh, with respect to dx, we have the relation 2 over c sine theta. So what is the difference between these two relations? The difference is 1 divided by cosine theta. So in order to migrate the apparent reflector or the apparent reflection on the seismic section into the one related or the real one related to the uh, true ge geologic section, I have to multiply this relation by 1 divided by cosine theta. So I end up with the, the uh, div uh, derivative of, the, of t uh, accord, uh, with respect to x uh, equal to c, 2 divided by c tan theta. So, for dipping reflector, for dipping reflector, I have, I will apply or multiply the uh, points, I have the, the, the energy on the stacked section by cosine theta. The cosine theta uh, is, is obtained, or, uh, the theta angle is obtained from this relation from this graph. So multiplying this by 1 divided by cosine theta, we have this one, which is the migrated section for zero offset gather. OK? Okay. 
Okay, this one is not the true, the true uh, dip. It's apparent dip, okay, due to the movement of the points from its original position to its apparent position. So we are returning points to their respective uh, position by multiplying this by 1 divided by cosine theta. We end up with correcting the reflector position to its uh, accurate or to its nearly the right place. Okay? Now, this is a situation when we have, say, sink line. We have the so-called bow type phenomena. It, it looks like uh, the, the, the one who will uh, have tie, because the energy uh, cross, uh, uh, crisscrossed and the recording, the zero offset recording, is not its, in its proper place. Okay? You see? The point here, the zero offset, zero offset point here, should be in this place on the surface. Okay? Yet, it's, it's there. Okay? The same, the, the same problem here. This point should be here in the, in the, in the surface. Yet, it's recorded there. So, we have uh, the, the energy or the rays is crossing, so we want to make them, migrate them to, to the proper position. Does anybody of you have an idea how to do this? How to migrate the uh, Yes. Do you have any idea? Can you think? Can you think? One? Just now, you say when you want to do migration, we multiply with one over cost theta, is it? Yes, so. Just? Just that? No. Anybody? Uh, who, ha who has imagination? <laughs> yes? Somebody with imagination. Okay. To solve this problem, okay, this is the time, uh, the time equivalent of this situation. To solve this one, to solve this one, we divide this part into small, dipping lines and for each small dipping segment so I will divide into segments and for each segment I will apply the dip reflector migration yes yes so it will be small segments Okay, small dipping segments. For each small dipping seg segments, I apply dip, uh, dipping reflector migration for all this situation to return the output in its proper location. So far, so far all what we, we, we discussed about migration was kinematic, which means I am correcting only for time. The amplitude is not, re is not retained or is not corrected. So I may have good timing, but the amplitude is not the proper one. So next lecture, we'll speak about another one which uses wave type phenomena for migration in order to uh, solve these problems, which is called Kirchhoff migration.